J.J. Reddick joined Felger and Maz today to talk about the Celtics' playoff run, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, the Western Conference. Mind you, chat, just, just cringe warning. It does get a little cringy how this conversation goes. How you doing, JJ? I'm great. How are you guys doing? Good. Excellent. Thanks for joining us. You heard Jalen Brown there say, I never win bleep after getting the conference final. First of all, bro, let me just say this right now. Even Massachusetts motherfuckers don't really fuck with these dudes, bro. Like, their their job is to bo- uh, cover all of Boston sports, but they have really big preferences to Patriots, to the Patriots, to the Bruins, and the Red Sox. Like, the Celtics are, like, the, the fourth team that they really cover. But the way they talk about not only the Celtics, but all the other teams, bro, they just be shitting on these teams. You know what I'm saying? And I understand you want to hear objective talk from your um, local sports radio, but it's, like, weird subjective talk that they just shit on every team, bro. But... L MVP... Uh, I ask you, would you have voted for him? Do you think he should have been the conference final MVP? I think you could make a case for either him or Jason Tatum. I had no issue with Jalen winning, and I wouldn't have had an issue had Jason Tatum won. Um, yeah, I think that's what makes uh, their sort of partnership so unique. Um, you know, on any given night, uh, one of them can go for forty. Um, Jason, you know, in games three and four, um, had uh, damn near triple doubles. But I, I look at this Celtics team, I, I know so much was made early on uh, with, with Jason and Jalen about, like, who who was the guy, you know, who was going to be the better player. Um, can this partnership work? And I, I just look at what this team is now, today, and how valuable all of the players are in their roles, how everybody is spot. People, people early this season were even making the case that, like, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum can't have great games at the same time. They've proven that wrong. Um, and just what that duo has accomplished up until this point. Like I told y'all, bro, I shot the Crimson for the 40 bits. Everything gets justified if they win this year. If they win this year, everything gets justified. But if they lose, the questions are going to keep on coming, bro. That is, It really is as simple as that, bro. Because a lot of these questions is a simple yes or no if they win a championship. But... Uh, and Joe, I think, has just done an outstanding job this year, and it feels like a tr- Now, if JB wins finals MVP, it would still prove the fact that they work, regardless, they, that, that they work together. ...through team, uh, and you watch them play, and you, you talk to them, you know, behind the scenes in our pregame meetings. What did Perk say about the Obviously, Celtics? I know a bunch a of guys on the Celtics. team and some of their coaching staff, and that that's the big takeaway to me is just what a uh, what a a team they are just in terms of terms of their cohesiveness and, and being connected as a group and that's hard to find in the NBA and it's one of the reasons they had one of the best regular seasons ever and it's one of the reasons they've had uh, one of the best runs here in the playoffs in, in recent memory. Do you think Tatum gets over scrutinized? Do I think Jason Tatum gets over scrutinized? Yeah. yeah, everybody gets over scrutinized. That's what I think. I think everybody gets over scrutinized. Um, you know, I, again, if you look at the sort of history of uh... now, I will say this: a lot of people were shitting on ninety-eight point five for this clip, and I want to hear y'all perspective on how JJ Reddick responds to these answers. Let me just let me. I I, I want to pay attention to how JJ Reddick responds to these answers. <laughs> best players on the best team and by that i mean sort of the the superstar who wins a championship right um a lot of these guys it took to they were 27 28 29 years old um jason had so much success he said that they didn't sweep anybody so they suck then was corrected and shifted the goal post live and said they still suck because they were supposed to sweep i seen kendrick say that they were going to win the championship too i don't kendrick's all over the place bro early um and, and part of that was the partnership with Jalen and the teams they had but um you know it, it, it the thing i love about jason and he was as a jump shooter was really really uh uh excellent from like january on through the regular season and he struggled a little bit um in the playoffs he is so much more than a jump shooter he does so many things on a basketball floor that impact winning and you could make the case 
for uh, their top six that they all do. Look at these two. I mean, he's paying. He's paying. That. And Joe has gotten, I think, the most out of their bench with Cornette and and uh, Peyton and, and Sam this year. So it's just, it, with Tatum, it, it's always going to be there. And as, as Joe always says, if he wins this year, it's going to be there next year. I mean, look at look at the discourse around Jokic um, during the conference fi- or the se- conference semifinals against Minnesota. It, it never leaves you. That's that's part of what we signed up for. JJ, if they, as I'm sure you know, there's been like a pass fail sort of all or nothing approach or perspective on this season. They either win it or they don't. Uh, it's well, I mean. Those are, those are the only two options once you get into the playoffs. Been you know pass fail for lack of a better term. If they were to not win the championship, why do you think it'll be? If they do not think if if you, if they do not win the championship, why do you think that'll be? That that that's the question. Um, if they don't win the championship, it'll be because the better team won. Um, and and you know playoffs again. So he said, if they don't win the championship, the better team won. Okay, just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. And but matchups they- are matchups are important, and I think problem solving is important. And um, sometimes you run into a problem you can't solve, and uh, that's that's been the case. Um, I think in the history of the NBA playoffs, that's been the case. JJ, you the, think there's a chance the best team wins? You think there's a chance Dallas is better than Boston? Uh, I, I look. I, I don't know if Minnesota is still in there, right? I don't know. Is Minnesota still playing? Do you think, either those, do you think, either, do you think either of those teams are better than the Celtics? Again, you can't look at a regular season and an eighty-two game aggregate, and you can't look at uh, you know uh, a plus-minus net differential, and you can't look at that's the regular season. How about your right? eyes? And, Just your eyes. Um. I think Boston is the better team. Okay, so is it possible that they would... that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that Dallas won't present a problem or Minnesota won't present a problem that Boston can't solve. So, so this is where JJ kind of loses me. He admits that Boston is a better team, but also said in the beginning that the reason why the Celtics would lose is because the better team won. But he's also having trouble admit that. The better team can lose. You know what I'm saying? But sure, they would lose. But I think for, that, I think Boston is the better team for right, sure. So Why they wouldn't would, I think that? Well, they would lose for a reason other than being a better team. Like that happens, right? You get outworked or outcoached, or you. I don't you, think you, you get outworked at this stage of 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 basketball. Right. I think that's a very that's a very uh, asinine way to talk about the NBA. You think you think the Boston beat. Indiana because they got out because Indiana got outworked. No, not in that case. I think Miami outworks uh, Boston a lot of times when they play. Uh, okay, well, I'll disagree with you on that. So you think Miami's better than the Celtics? You yeah. think you think you think Miami wants it more? Is that what you think? I think their more playoff their play <laughs> style is more playoff conducive. I don't know how do the Celtics lose uh, to Miami? I don't know. Boston's had a lot of success, man. It's hard to win a championship. Well, no, why when, only team. I would say well, why only one team does. When we asked you how would the Celtics lose because they lost to a better team. I mean, so you think when they're losing... No, the to Miami- better team always wins because they present a problem that can't be solved. Okay. So you, you, you think it's a matchup thing then? Yeah, that's what all the playoffs are. So what what sort of matchup? Do you think there's any matchups in Dallas or... I will say this. I think I, maybe JJ's just explaining it wrong. Maybe JJ's just explaining it wrong. But I think what he's kind of leading to is like the, the whole power scaling thing. That I've been talking about where like just cause you know the stats lean in your favor, you beat better teams going into a series, you beat the better team going yeah. Like that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna win because playoffs are about matchups. You know what I'm saying? But he said offs are about matchups two answers ago. They were trying to lead him into an answer. As he's saying on paper, the Celtics are better, but the Mavs could find something that make okay. Minnesota, if you want to go there, that would present a problem for the Celtics. Um, well, I, I think in general, um, you know, one of the one of the things that Dallas has become is, you know, a really good defensive team, particularly against against isolation. And Boston, obviously, um, heavy isolation team. Um, and the reason is, is you know, the, the size of PJ Washington, the size of 
of Derek Jones Jr., Gafford Lively on the back line. Um, you know, Porzingis' health, I think, is important here. Like, if he, Porzingis is is the Kristaps Porzingis that we, you know, we saw all season long, um, he could be a problem that Dallas can't solve, <laughs> right? Because, uh, you know, his ability to sort of space the floor and, and uh, also punish mis- mismatches. You know, again, this is like you get to this stage of the season – and it is a little bit of a chess match. It's not who's outworking someone or who wants it more. Do y'all agree with that though? The the fact that outworking someone isn't a factor. Um, I, again, I, I do believe matchups and schemes are a much bigger factor in all of this because who isn't trying at this point in the season? But I don't know. Like that that's been a a, a, a consistent talking point with the the Timberwolves series is like one team just looks more gassed one team looks more gassed than the other you know what i'm saying but is that a want thing i guess not but i don't know would do you think porzingis would be able to be able to jump right back in seamlessly after a month off or would you worry about rust for him i don't worry about rust uh no i don't worry about rust Uh, you know there's there's obviously going to be a ramp up period i think you know in, in today's nba that's that's what every every sort of team does. Um, you get a ramp up period, and so I, I think it's more just like, is he ready physically? You know, the rust part of it. You know, if, if he's either going to be ready physically or not ready physically, and the ramp up period sort of requires you to work off that rust. JJ Redick is joining us from ESPN, ABC, Old Man in the Three uh, podcast, and DraftKings, of course. I want to go back to like you say, scrutiny is part of the deal. No, got a pocket watch chat. Those 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 mics are like fourteen hundred a pop, man. Just a mic, just a mic, just a module. Deal there with Jason Tatum. So let's let's scrutinize him a little bit and read you some numbers here from the playoffs. The last now that's dick suck. Did y- did y'all hear how we introed that segment? Hold on. Go back to like you say scrutiny is part of the deal there with Jason Tatum. So let's let's scrutinize him a little bit. And- what the? Who does that? <laughs> yo, yo, yo. Now that's weird behavior. That right there is, yo. He says so. Scrutiny is a part of the game. Let's scrutinize someone. You did not have to do that, gang. Felger, you did not have to do that, bro. At least he's honest, I guess. But goddamn, dude. And bring you some numbers here from the playoffs. The last two years, okay, minimum seventy-five three-point attempts. Only forty-two players qualify. So these are all starters, big-minute guys. A three-point percentage among those guys, Jason Tatum, is shooting 31% from three. That ranks 40th out of 42 guys. Uh, Out of those 42 guys, though, he ranks seventh in three-point attempts. So, long story short, among guys who play a lot in the playoffs the last two years, he takes as many three-pointers as anyone and misses pretty much more than anyone. Is that a fair thing to scrutinize him over? Yeah, I already brought that up. I already brought that up. I missed it. You want to refresh? Did you? No, I said I already brought that up. You did? I already said that. Yeah, I said he was he he's struggled with his jump shot in the playoffs. His jump he already shot. said that. Okay, but how about yeah. how about where he's shooting from? If you're if you're missing that many from behind the line, should you be shooting that many? Um, you know, I think as a player. <laughs> Yo, I'm telling y'all, bro. This is like this this is cringe with just how the conversation flowed, bro. Because. Obviously, when you when you call in someone, especially like a guest like JJ, you want everything to go smoothly. You know what I'm saying? But there's like there's tension in the air, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like you can feel it. There's there's a little bit of tension in the air, man. Here, you don't want to turn off certain parts of your game because it it helps keep defenses honest. Um, game three, you know, in Indy, they needed all five of those threes, you know, that he made. So uh, you know, I, I and again, he was. January 1st on in the regular season, he was over 40, I think 41% on off the dribble threes. Um, so he came into the playoffs in, in sort of a really good uh, rhythm shooting the basketball. Um, but, you know, I, again, I, it's, 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 it's fun with Jason because you look at him and he's, he's, he's never going to be defined by his jump shot, right? He's going to be defined by all the other stuff that he does at such a high level on the basketball floor. So you don't think he needs to play closer to the rim or change his shot selection? Well, no, because I, I think he does. So like game three, let's say game three, you know, he created a bunch of stuff 
for Al Horford with his drives, right? Um, I think, and that that's what I was talking about before this clip of like, I understand Jason Tatum is 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 not shooting threes at a high clip, but sometimes, and this is one of those times, you just gotta shoot that shit to keep the defense honest. You know what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta shoot that shit to keep the defense on your toes. Because I also think JT is a good enough shooter to the point where when it does fall, you are gonna regret not stepping up. You know what I'm saying? And you don't you don't ever know when it's gonna fall, so you just keep on contesting. Um, and when it does fall, again, it opens up so many different options for JT. So if I'm him, hey man, if if you're open, don't force it. Obviously, don't force it. Take take the best shots you can. But if you're open, take them. Fuck it. If you miss, you miss. You know what I'm saying? Because at least for me, chat, what I'm looking at is three-point attempts in the playoffs. At least this season. I don't I don't know all of his attempts last season off the top of my head. Like, a lot of the shots are good. A, a lot of the shots are good threes. He's just missing them. You know? And I know that may be a cop-out answer, but at the end of the day, this is a dude capable of shooting 37 or 40% from three. Um, he shot 38% from three in a regular season. And if you're shoot and if you're leaving a 38% shooter from three open and he doesn't take it, I think that's a problem. Just cause you you want him to to step in and take a, a floater from two. Now nah, take the three, bro. Let's let's risk it. Five of the seven threes were off Jason Tatum assists. When he did drive and kick, uh, the Boston Celtics shot four of six from three. So, again, he just does a lot of stuff. And, and getting caught up in one aspect of his game, you know, is, I, I think, just ridiculous. Do you think, uh, looking at the two... 25, 10, and 5, three guys in this year's playoffs, right? I'm sorry, Sam. Who are they? Who are they? Two, Jokic, Embiid, Tatum, 25, 10, and 5. That's, that's what he's... Three guys are averaging that. Okay, so right. there's, but there's so there's no point in bringing up something that he might not do well. Like we, so you say, how do the, we ask? How do the Celtics lose? I think one of the way the Celtics lose, JJ, is that they shoot themselves out of a game, and I've seen them do that over and over and over again. Lose to teams that are not as good as them because their shot selection, their play style, the reliance on the three point ball. Tatum feels like one of the worst defenders based on the percentages and what I see. And this is why JJ is not taking y'all serious, bro. Felger, Felger, I, let me solo. This is why JJ Reddick is not taking y'all serious right now. I don't know what kind of bullshit you're seeing on your screen to the point where you legitimately think that Jason Tatum is a bad defender. Mind you, again, this is Boston media saying this, bro. Bad defender? And you're going to make a segment, hey, let's scrutinize him. It's time to scrutinize him. That's some weird behavior, bro. That's, a, that's some weird behavior. Good as them because their shot selection, their play style, the reliance on the three-point ball, Tatum feels like one of the worst defenders based on the percentages and what I see. And so that's just something that we scrutinize. If you think that's... Oh, it's fair. That's, you, that's, that's your job to scrutinize. I... I, I... <laughs> Yes, JJ. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and this is why JJ Reddick has started the Mind the Game pod. How, why why JJ Reddick um, does his podcast the way that he does is because of shit like this. And they're getting punked right now, bro. They're getting punked. They're getting punked, bro. I, I tend to believe in, in, in like a seven game series versus a, a one game series. Like Miami shot better than they've ever shot in their life in game two of the first round. Right. That was, I, I, I want to say that was the most threes they've ever made. Right. Do, do we expect them to make 23 threes for, for five, five more games? No. So I think when you look at the Celtics and they were the number one three point shooting team, in the regular season for uh, attempts and makes, they're the number one three-point shooting team in the postseason for attempts and makes. You know that's how they play. That's their identity. That's built into it. Um, it's one of the reasons they're successful. They manage their shot. Let, profile. Me, let me let me say this too, man. The, the three-point shooting argument and shooting your way out of games argument is dead to me. 
is dead to me, bro. There have been way too many successful teams that are shooting threes at a high clip in the last five years that tells me it is an extremely effective play style. It is a flawed play style, but it is a play style that's so effective that you you just live with the results. You just you just live with it. That's what the 2018 Rockets did. They just live with the results, but it was an effective game plan. You know what I'm saying? That you don't you shouldn't really stray away from. If it's been working. So same same thing with the Celtics. It, it is it a game plan that relies on three point shooting? Absolutely. But one, they got one of the few personnel that can actually afford that because of how many perimeter um offensive players that they got. They got a bunch of 40% shooters on the team that allows that as well. And because of their playmaking, it also opens up a bunch of shooters to be to be taking wide open threes. You know what I'm saying? Like not a, a lot of these threes, in my opinion, don't look like they're contested. So, you know, if if there's just a night where the Celtics shoot, I don't know, 13 or 50, again, you just you just live with that. I don't know. Maybe maybe that's 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 a bad outlook on thing, but uh, on things, but you just live with that. It's definitely possible, but the only example of the highest scale was 2018. 2018 Rockets game seven and also the Celtics um in the other game seven also shot poorly from three. You know, but file that ma- they manage the other team shot profile and eventually in a seg- seven game series you would assume that the odds say math works, right? Math works. Do uh, of the teams left in the West, and I understand it's you know it was three zero going into last night. But d- does one of those two teams present matchup wise a more a bigger challenge for Boston than the other? Um, that's a great question. You know, I, I would I would sort of lean towards Dallas to be honest with you. Um. You know, I think Luca being as good as Fel- Felger is tired of this. Felger's always been an asshole to me. I, I never liked him, man. As he does, I, I think that uh, Luca being as good as he is, excuse me, that that does matter. Um, I think both teams have really good defenders individually, uh, and and collectively, both teams are really good. Um, you know, I, I think with Minnesota, you know, again going back to the the, the Porzingis thing, I think Minnesota. Uh, probably doesn't match up as well, um, you know, given given what what Chris Kristaps can do. Um, but I think both teams present their challenges, and and it'll be interesting to see too. It's like, you know, the, the I've got a, a film edit coming later tonight of uh, of all the uh, Anthony Edwards ISOs, and uh, I know the Celtics staff will be watching Dallas's defense and and sort of how they play and where they can sort of manipulate spacing and manipulate the dunker spot and manipulate who the low guy is on any drive and who the next man is on any help. So, um, yeah, just thinking about that kind of stuff, but yeah, I would, I would lean towards Dallas probably just, just because of Luca. Yeah. Anyone. <laughs> That's very high praise for Luca, man. I, I feel it. I feel it. I think, um, just cause of how good Dallas has been defensively. I think Dallas poses problems on both sides of the court. Minnesota respect respect to their team, obviously their comp. Um, I've I've wanted to say this since the beginning. That that offense is just too shaky. The offense is just too shaky, bro. Like Ant, if hey, listen, if we're getting the first two rounds of Ant where he's averaging thirty, whole different squad. But I feel like what you could expect from Ant on every given night is really like twenty six to twenty eight, which is still a really high clip. You know what I'm saying? And Cat is just boy, Cat. Cat to me is the biggest X factor for the Minnesota Timberwolves, and Cat is just way too inconsistent. Gobert has his offensive problems, and then after that, who are you relying on? Jaden McDaniels and, and Mike Conley. Again, respect to their offense. I'm not saying it's dog shit. Obviously, you don't beat the Denver Nuggets by having a dog shit offense. But if if we're about to sit here and rely on Jaden McDaniels to be Clay Thompson 2.0 and Mike Conley to turn back the clock. I like I like our chances offensively because of how great we are offensively to score effectively on their defense. 
while simultaneously having a strong enough defense to contain Minnesota's offense. I I, I just like those chances way more uh, compared to going up against Dallas. Dallas is is a way more dynamic offense, um, and their defense is solid enough to, you know what I'm saying, um, take seriously. Oh, my God. Crazy back. back. I'm left to give a coaching edge to any of the three teams left. Uh, well, I would say all three are awesome coaches. <laughs> There's a reason that they're... Look at so <laughs> Yeah, look at them. They are tired of these neutral but factual uh, fucking answers, dog. Bro, at this point, bro, I understand we like, we like to give coaching edges to, like, styles make fights, bro, and I think J.J., is a dude that's been emphasizing that since the beginning of this clip. Styles make fights. You know what I'm saying? This 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 fighter got a certain style. This fighter got a certain style. We put them in the ring together. The fight will shake out depending on those those styles of fighting. I don't. It is what it is, man. There's their team is there. I mean, so but I mean, let's just say right well, now. Let's just say you had to rank them. You know, like. You got to analyze the thing and go one, two, three. How would you do that? Well, luckily I don't. Luckily I don't. Um, no, I, I think if you get to this stage in the season, um, you're, you're a well-coached team. Um, you're a well-coached team. And uh, Finchie, Finchie yeah. who I played for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're really bad at baiting into bait, baiting motherfuckers into to answers, dog. This is really bad, bro. This is really bad. Has done a great job. Um, you know, J Kid, I, I think, has been really good um, throughout these playoffs, um, both in, in game planning, but also in game adjustments. And um, Joe, I, you know, I think is one of the best coaches in the NBA. I don't, I don't know why they would ask these narrative ass questions to a motherfucker that's literally made it his mission to stop these narrative ass questions. I don't, why would you ask him of all people, these questions? This was a, this was such a wasted opportunity, bro. So all three coaches are great. All right. I think, I think kid sucks and Missoula is potentially a liability, but let's just agree to disagree. <laughs> JJ, we'll let you go. Thank you so much for taking the time. We but <laughs> kid sucks. Missoula sucks. Jason Tatum needs to be scrutinized. Like, all right, man. Do appreciate it. If you like that clip, check out more videos from Felger and Maz here. Fuck you. Get cooked. Get cooked, by the way. Let's look at these replies. Absolutely stuffed into a locker. This was a wonderful watch. That was embarrassing. It makes Boston look like we have no idea what we're talking about. Let's look at the replies. They don't. What did they say or ask that was incorrect? Felger was literally just trying to get him to agree with his contrarian takes, and JJ wasn't having it. Asking him to rank the remaining three coaches just so Felger can say he thinks uh, kid sucks and Missoula is a liability. What was the point of that? JJ is a D-bag, always has been. Well, he's right on that. I can't stand Felger and Maz, but JJ was a prick during the interview. <laughs> Who do you think knows more about basketball, Felger or JJ Redick? Uh, okay. Stops there. Let's see. Yeah, this was insanely awkward, though. He called Felger's takes asinine and ridiculous. No truer words have ever been spoken. Lo uh, love watching these two clowns get exposed by a true basketball analyst. Felger is pretty solid with his hockey takes. Basketball isn't quite his thing. And that's what I'm saying, bro. That's what I understand, you know, they're just doing their job. It's their job to cover Boston sports, but it's it's very clear that they got their biases. Um and they just need to shut the fuck up about the Celtics, bro, cuz they they don't they don't know what they're talking about, bro. Waste of time interview. He was trying to tiptoe on a delicate line without saying anything controversial. Add some expression. Uh, had the same expressions as Felger. He's just boring doing in-game. He's just as boring doing in-game commentary. But what's with the trolls who listen live and then bash you guys in the comments? Reddick sucks. That was hilarious. JJ forcefully pulled those three into a meaningful basketball conversation, kicking and screaming. Called them out for their lazy, uninformed takes uh, where appropriate. 
in the end, actually one of the better F and M segments on the season. <laughs> That's a real asinine way I cackled. These two are so embarrassing. Must be fun answering all questions from a Boston radio host aimed at saying how much Tatum sucks and trying to get Reddick to agree. I don't know, dude. I don't know, bro. Like, the fact that this is Boston's conversation going into the finals. Boston Radio's conversation going into the finals, bro. These are the same clowns that said... um, even 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 if they win a championship, like everyone's been saying the the Mickey Mouse run to the finals has been a thing. But even if they win a championship, who the fuck cares? Because there wasn't a challenge, bro. Like that's 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 some weird shit to say about your home team. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 some that's some weird shit to say. 